Just like any vehicle on the road today, electric cars are responsible for a certain amount of waste during their production, their lifetime, and their disposal. And while the myth that electric vehicles need to have their batteries replaced every few years at a cost of tens of thousands of dollars has been thankfully well and truly busted, most electric car battery packs outlive the car that they're fitted into and the cost of batteries has dramatically dropped, we still hear a lot of people express concern in the comments section that electric car batteries, which do contain toxins, are simply put into a landfill at the end of their lives. This, says electric car critics, when combined with the waste and pollution generated during the vehicle's production, makes them allegedly no better than internal combustion engine vehicles when it comes to resources use and pollution. While there are a number of excellent studies on well-to-wheel impacts of electric vehicles on the planet when compared to ICE vehicles, all of which show that over the lifetime of the vehicle, electric vehicles are massively ahead on both emissions and resources use, I thought it was about time we did a video discussing some of the things that do happen to electric vehicle battery packs after they're no longer being used to power an electric car. Before we do that, let's clear one thing up. In most countries around the world, disposing of hybrid and electric car battery packs in landfill is not only discouraged, but illegal. Most countries around the world now have strict rules concerning the disposal of vehicles after they've ended their useful life, and just as engine oil and other fluids from internal combustion engine vehicles must be specially disposed of at dedicated breakers' yards to ensure that there is no environmental damage caused, so too must electric vehicle batteries be safely disposed. How does that happen? Well, as I said, there are a number of different solutions depending on the circumstances in which the battery pack needs to be disposed. But it generally depends on if your car has been written off by insurance companies or if it's actually just receiving a battery pack replacement due to a manufacturing defect or a aged battery pack. In the first scenario, you'll very often see salvage companies like Copart in the US auction off entire cars complete battery pack et al. It's how people like Rich Benoit of Richery Builds get crashed electric cars to rebuild and put back on the road. Sometimes such vehicles just need to get body repairs in order to get them back on the road. Sometimes they require a battery replacement from another identical salvage car. Maybe the original car's battery pack was flooded with salt water, for example. Either way, in both of those scenarios, the car's battery pack is very much pushed back into service. A variation on this, of course, is if a car is wrecked and parted out. Sometimes you'll find enthusiasts will buy salvage batteries for their own project cars at auction. And sometimes you'll see those packs repurposed by third-party companies who turn, say, a wrecked Nissan Leaf's perfectly functional battery pack into a series of smaller battery packs destined for electric car conversion projects, hobbyists, or sometimes some form of DIY energy storage system. But that will be maybe in another video. As I noted at the top, even when the car is written off and ends up at a salvage yard, the battery packs aren't just crushed and put into landfill. But actually, I've got some experience of this myself. Back in 2008, while I was working on my own plug-in Prius conversion, I repurchased three Toyota Prius battery packs from a local vehicle recycling company, or Breakers Yard, if you prefer. Back then, Breakers Yards were actually quite happy if you came along and purchased and removed salvaged battery packs from hybrids and electric cars, as the company itself didn't have to worry about removing them or dealing with storing them. The scenarios I've just covered, though, are most certainly edge case ones. And as electric vehicles become more common and there are more electric cars on the road, expect more salvage specialists, especially large corporate ones, to have their own set ways of safely verifying and reselling or recycling electric car battery packs. But let's look at a more likely scenario. Batteries which are removed from functional cars by dealerships either as the result of a warranty claim or a recall, or for that matter, a rare occurrence when a customer comes to a dealer or an automaker and asks them to replace their car's original battery pack due to premature battery aging, high mileage, or reduced range. In situations where official dealerships are doing the battery swap, it's usual for the original battery to be returned to the manufacturer, 
who, upon receipt, will do a different number of things to it. One option is for the automaker to physically open up the battery pack, identify any poorly performing cells or failed components, and then replace them with new or known good ones. The packs are then carefully tested, recertified, and can make their way back into another car in the future. But this only usually happens if the pack is known to be a low mileage one and in good health, save for a single component failure, such as a shortage cell. And James and Kate did a fantastic video on that, so I'll link to that below. If the battery pack has a long and useful life in an electric car and is being retired because it has reduced range or a charge capacity, it's often sent to be used in a second life battery project. Pretty much every automaker from Toyota through to Nissan, Volkswagen, BMW and Chevrolet have some sort of second life battery project. At the moment, the majority of these projects are still very much pilot projects. Nissan reuses old Leaf and EMV200 battery cells in a variety of different applications, including static energy storage products and even emergency power backup for streetlights in earthquake prone areas of the world. But BMW, meanwhile, has engaged in several massive grid tied energy storage pilot projects where BMW Mini E, BMW Active E, i3 and i8 batteries are repackaged in massive battery arrays designed to help the peak shaving of the local electricity grid. Toyota has sent used Toyota hybrid batteries to national parks in the US to help remote ranger stations operate off-grid from 100% renewable energy, and Chevrolet has done its own off-grid second life projects. For the most part, these second life projects are the preferred option for most electric vehicle battery cells today, partly because of the reduced amounts of resources needed to transition packs from a car use to another one, but also because electric car battery packs, while no longer used in a vehicle, still have plenty of energy storage capabilities. What exactly do I mean? Well, in an electric car, the battery pack is put under a lot of stress. It's constantly being charged and discharged, often at high currents. And when the pack is new, there's no problem for that pack. But as it ages, the cells start to deform at a molecular level. The physical and chemical changes within the pack make it harder to pull high amounts of instantaneous energy out of that pack without causing further damage to it. But in applications where the power is pulled out of the battery pack a whole lot more slowly, either because the power draw is much lower or because the battery is part of a much larger array of batteries arranged in parallel, all of which share a fraction of the current draw, the battery pack can still provide a very usable storage capacity. Some Second Life projects require battery packs to be removed from their original cases and repackaged, either with new wiring or to allow it to fit into the new application. But other Second Life projects are just designed to use original casings and battery packs as they left the factory and were placed in the car. And in the future, things like the wireless battery management system that GM's Ultium battery design uses, for example, should make packs even easier to implement in Second Life projects. If reconditioning and sending out the battery pack to be used in another vehicle or a Second Life project isn't possible, then we are on to the last option, recycling. This is generally considered the least preferable choice for battery cells that come back to a car company because, well, it requires the most energy to do. But at the end of the day, it also ensures that battery cells can be broken down into their constituent parts and those materials can then be used to build new electric vehicle cells or those raw materials can be sold on to be used in other industries. In fact, the only automaker that's right now looking at battery recycling first rather than second life projects is Tesla, which has its own battery recycling pilot program operating at Giga Nevada, where it's recycling both end of life Tesla battery packs as well as waste battery cells from the manufacturing process. The exact methods used for recycling depend on each company and the processes being used, but most methods being used today to recycle batteries include breaking apart battery cells mechanically, pyrometallurgy, where the battery cell is first discharged and ground up before being roasted, smelted or refined at different temperatures to break apart the various chemical bonds and leave the constituent resources or some form of leaching, where the powdered battery is subjected to various acids, ranging from sulfuric acid to plain old citric acid. 
Other processes exist, but are a little less common. These include reduction processes involving hydrogen peroxide, sodium sulfide, and sodium hydrosulfide. Lithium hydroxide, an alkaline solution, has even been experimented with to help separate the valuable metals from within the cell's components. I am not a chemist, and I'm certainly not either an electrochemist or a metallurgist, so I'm not going to go into in-depth about each of how these processes work. Frankly, I don't really understand them. But suffice to say that in recent years, we've seen more and more innovative ways of breaking apart the chemical bonds that the various metals used in batteries have, and many of them have discovered cleaner, greener ways of salvaging the raw materials that are used in an electric car battery pack. At one point, recycling batteries was an incredibly energy-intensive process that required a lot of energy and a lot of nasty chemicals. Newer methods are both less energy-intensive and kinder to the environment because they use less toxic chemicals to break things apart. They're also increasing the amount of recycled material that's recovered. A decade ago, even the best battery recycling programs weren't able to recycle all of the battery packs, but now several companies, including Tesla, say that 100% recyclability is within reach. And if you need further proof that recycling batteries isn't as hard as some people would have you believe, look at the lead-acid starter battery that's used in most internal combustion engine cars today. At one point, these batteries, which contain some pretty nasty things like, you know, lead and sulfuric acid, just headed to the junkyard or the landfill. But today, 90% of all lead-acid batteries are recycled at the end of their life, with between 60 and 80% of those batteries being reused and refined into their base materials for use in other industries or making new batteries. What's more, building new batteries from recycled ones is a lot more cost-effective than digging up and refining raw materials for every new battery you need to make. While there is a big difference between a lead-acid starter battery and, say, a lithium-ion battery pack as used in an EV, the same logic is true. At one point, it was easier to dig up raw materials and refine them to make new EV battery packs. But it's quickly becoming easier and cheaper to just recycle those components from old batteries and use those materials to make new ones. This method is intrinsic to Tesla's new master plan to reduce the cost of making automotive-grade lithium-ion batteries by 69%. And it's also the plan of other companies around the world, like Northvolt Batteries in Europe and Redwood Materials, the company founded by former CTO of Tesla, J.B. Straubel. Aside from requiring less stuff to be dug up and refined from the earth, 100% or near-to-it recycling programs, while still in their infancy, also reduce the reliance that most automakers and battery suppliers currently have right now on cobalt mines in Africa, and the questionable ethics that some of those mines operate under. In conclusion then, while some commentators might have you believe that electric car battery packs are most certainly destined for the landfill after they're done in your car, the reality is very different indeed. That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. 